motivational speaker next. Uh, Mrs. Vijay Lakshmi Rao, the mentor and uh, the business advisor. Mrs. Vijay Lakshmi Rao, an MBA from IAM Ahmedabad, has over 35 years experience in industry, consulting and entrepreneurship. She currently provides mentoring and business advisory services to help the entrepreneurs scale their business. She has mentored women entrepreneurs over five years at ISB and is currently associated as a mentor with a number of forums, including IIT Madras and uh, Thai Chennai. In her last entrepreneurial assignment, uh, Viji Ma'am was director and COO at the Scope E-Knowledge Center Private Limited, a global IT service company. Viji Ma'am is very passionate about women's education, empowerment and entrepreneurship. She's an advisor and founder member of a voluntary forum, Empowering Women in IT, and is also associated with ANEW, an NGO that trains and finds placement for underprivileged women. Over to you, Mrs. Vijay Lakshmi Rao. Okay, thank you, Dr. Maslin, for uh, that lovely introduction. Um, I'd like to begin by actually thanking you for having invited me for this forum. I think it's the first time that I'm attending a COVID event and it has been truly amazing. And uh, though it has taken like over two hours, I decided to stay on and listen to all the speakers because uh, it was really a very, very useful event, even for somebody like me who's been in the field of nature. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Umaji, Madhuji and uh, Nidhiji because I think you as uh, uh, co-founders of this uh, great organization are doing a wonderful service in terms of, you know, both knowledge sharing as well as supporting uh, women entrepreneurs. It is rare to come across an event where such specifics on GST, on greenfield venture, somebody outlining the loan process, very few forums actually host such a detailed session. And I think this has been most useful from my side. I would definitely like to spread the word about Kobe to a lot more women entrepreneurs I know. I think they should be attending for yourself, honestly. So thank you very much for inviting me. I know I am the last speaker for the day and we are also short of time. And uh, we've had some wonderful speakers speak before me. So I'd not like to repeat what many of them have said. They have all been motivational in their own. But um, I'd like to cover just, uh, you know, three things. Uh, the first one being that, uh, as I was telling Madhuji before we started, uh, you know, this is an area that I have been associated with this whole area of women entrepreneurship. Uh, first as an entrepreneur myself, having rode the entrepreneurial journey for about 12 years. And then of course, over the last 10 years, having mentored uh, women entrepreneurs. So, uh, you know, I find that the way women entrepreneurship has grown and the trends that I foresee, I'd like to share some of those with you. The second point I'd like to cover is in terms of why I believe there's a great fit between women and entrepreneurship. Okay. And finally, of course, a few tips uh, based on my own experience, but I think uh, somebody like Anu, who's uh, you know so accomplished and also in the services space has covered, but I'll still touch upon a few. So I'd like to keep it short, Dr. Maslin, if you don't mind. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is that I know Ramesh did mention that there are uh, you know close to uh, uh, 14 million uh, women entrepreneurs in India today, and we constitute about 20% of the total entrepreneurship base in the country. And this is way ahead of what uh, Startup India and the government had put out statistics, you know, a few years ago, where we were just about 14%. So this whole women entrepreneurship space is growing exponentially. And if you look at it, even globally, India was really not up there a few years ago. But now we are catching up. And this is something I think each one of us have every reason to be proud of. Because as women entrepreneurs, each one of us has done something to contribute to this space. I know the audience here consists of both very accomplished uh, entrepreneurs as well as some who are, uh, you know, emerging. And, you know, I saw content writers and people like those chatting in the, you know, chat box. So there are emerging entrepreneurs as well. But I think each one of us are part of this whole industrial ecosystem. So I'd just like to trace a few, you know, a few trends that have happened. 
you know, we were never called entrepreneurs before. And that's interesting because, you know, our grandmothers and aunts and even somebody like a Sri Devi in English, English who went and, you know, went to the US and discovered that what she was making, the laddus, you know, she was actually an entrepreneur. So uh, my grandmother, for instance, used to buy saris from Tanjore and sell it locally at a little margin without my grandfather knowing about it. She was an entrepreneur too. But if you look at the trends that have happened in the last few years, it has been amazing. Women have moved from extremely traditional home-based businesses to deep tech, be it aerospace, be it construction, be it machine learning. Women are there everywhere. We have broken several bastions, male bastions. And this is something each one of us should be proud of. And there are a few drivers as to why this has happened. One, of course, is that, and since we are talking about services in this uh, session, you know, I have girl students who are developing apps even while they are studying engineering. At the other end of the spectrum, I have women who are 60 plus who are getting into entrepreneurship. One of the most enterprising entrepreneurs I know in Chennai is a 60 plus woman who's making probiotics. So the age is not a barrier anymore. The second thing is that in terms of you know, what family businesses can do. I think fathers are now becoming generous enough to say that, yes, it can be, somebody sent me a WhatsApp the other day. It's called Shah and Daughters. It's not called Shah and Sons anymore, right? So family businesses are morphing into women-owned enterprises and extremely successful ones at that. And we have enough case studies to show that women can reorient traditional businesses. The third driver, of course, is in terms of online. You know, women have succeeded, according to me, far more during COVID times than men have. Simply because we have taken the advantage of online reach, of having businesses that can be conceptualized and scaled even from a home-based setting. We have always been comfortable working out of homes. And today, I think we are coming out of that cocoon and becoming butterflies and saying that, yes, we can scale businesses sitting at home. And I have seen enough women do that, right? Finally, of course, uh, in terms of hobbies and skills, um, even in terms of social entrepreneurship, if I'm passionate about, say, the environment, if I'm passionate about education, these are areas which women are getting into very successfully. The edutech business, for instance, in India, while the Baijus may be the, making the large names, look at the kind of people they employ. Most of them are women teachers. Right? So the edutech space, the fintech space, media, all these are today getting dominated by women. These are extremely interesting trends, but it also shows the kind of opportunities that are actually, you know, opening out for women in India. And it is up to us to make the most of it. In fact, at my time, there was no startup India. In fact, Anu Sriram and myself, we all wrote the entrepreneurial journey 20 years ago. There was no startup in India. Entrepreneurship was not sexy. Banks wouldn't look at us, especially if you are in a services business, right? Those were the days when we went knocking on doors saying, please give us some money. We have a great business idea. But today, look at the kind of opportunities there are. It was such a pleasure listening to Anamika, talking about Sidby, talking about, you know, ICICI. There is so much on offer, right? So there are opportunities galore. I was also very happy to hear about Kovi setting up three incubators because I think incubators and accelerators are a great step for women to get into. You know, these organizations can actually offer money, mentoring, and much, much more, including market support. So it is great for women entrepreneurs to try and see if they can, you know, actually get onto an incubator or an accelerator and achieve success. So these trends, according to me, are extremely interesting. My second point is in terms of the fit that exists between women and entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship? I mean, we start with an idea, right? And you know, as a species from time immemorial, women have known to be far more innovative and creative. And that is what entrepreneurship is all about. It's a product idea, which we try to, you know, make into a business. This is something we women are good at. The second thing in terms of our own quality of attention to detail, what does entrepreneurship require? 
checking technical feasibility, checking market feasibility, checking financial <laughs> and getting into the kind of specifics that the women can get into. I think this is a quality that entrepreneurship requires. The third is in terms of our own multitasking ability. You know, somebody talked about uh, everything that we did. I think Anu mentioned about how in the early stages in her humble beginnings, from doing jhadu pocha in your office to going actually pitching to investors, I think most of us have done it all. That multitasking ability, wearing multiple hats, we women are good at it. We need to leverage on that. The fourth thing, of course, is in terms of people orientation. And I think we women are, we manage teams well, we understand nuances. Look at the kind of interfaces we manage at home, from husband to children, to parents, to in-laws, to servants, to, you know, anybody who comes and helps us. We do it all. It is this people orientation which actually is needed when we scale business. And this is an inherent quality that women have. Finally, of course, in terms of work-life balance. You know, I have been part of the corporate world and I know what it takes to balance your, you know, work at home, work at office. It's a struggle. But entrepreneurship offers you this. I have, I know a woman entrepreneur who does her work at home during the day and night. She's running online music classes for kids in the US. Right? This is work-life balance at its best. And entrepreneurship offers women that. I myself, in my own journey, when I was in scope, I used to come back from office by six, make sure everything is kept ready, go back to office, do a conference call with my US client, come back and still work. You know, this is something which a regular corporate job cannot offer you. Entrepreneurship can. So there is a great fit between women and entrepreneurship. So with so many opportunities, why not make the most of what we are? According to me, I mean, I have mentored 50 to 60 entrepreneurs and, you know, especially at ISB, I often used to say, you girls have it lucky. This is the best time to be an entrepreneur. So go for it, right? But at the same time, I'd like to end by giving a few tips. And these are more my heart because um, don't take it amiss why uh, we women are so good at so many things. There are some things which I think we need to keep in mind as entrepreneurs. And sometimes this does reflect us a little bit in the bad light. And so I'm giving these more as tips and suggestions. The first one, of course, is that as women, we often have this, you know, we want to listen to everybody. We want to be good to everybody. You know, we want to get pats on the back from everybody. Don't do that. In entrepreneurship, follow your passion. You are at the center of it, right? Go after your dreams. Look at all the successful entrepreneurs around you. They have all focused on what they were good at, what interested them and made a success of it. If you feel you can't go to your startup on a Monday morning, then there's something wrong in the business that you have identified for yourself. So follow your passion and leverage on your strengths. The second thing, of course, is in terms of be ambitious. At the same time, be realistic. I don't know why, but I often come across women who are either at one end of the spectrum of saying, I do 100 crores business, while their turnover in this month is just about a lack. Be realistic. At the same time, dream big. I'm not saying don't dream big, but be realistic. We women often, the kind of forecasts that we come up with, the way we pitch to investors, I sometimes find that in terms of financials, we need to do a lot more homework. We are cost conscious, but we are not financially savvy. And that is something I think we women need to keep in mind. The third thing, of course, is in terms of having a detached passion towards our business. Yes, be passionate, but don't treat it like your own child. You should know when to let go. You should know when to share. If it's, you need to have a co-founder, go ahead and do it. Delegate. Don't get emotional, right? We tend to, you know, somewhere we tend to look at our business as our own son or daughter. Don't do that because it is good to, you know, have that little distance and say, this is my business. This is not something that I have, yes, I have created it, but it's not my own. It belongs to everybody. It belongs to my investors. It belongs to my customers. It belongs to my employees. It belongs to everybody. Treat it that way. 
The second last thing I'd like to talk about is in terms of don't hesitate to take risks. And, uh, you know, somewhere I think I was so happy about that little discussion which took place about Greenfield because I can relate to it completely. Because as women, uh, I think when you start your venture, there are so many things that you need to consider. But it's good to make an informed decision. Take your risks, but ask around for help. Look for mentors, look for advisors, look for experts. The whole ecosystem today offers you so many opportunities to go and knock the door. Do that. It is, you know, it's important that you get your specifics right before taking a decision. Take a risk, but make an informed choice. And finally, of course, be strong. Be a woman. I'd never tell a woman entrepreneur to be a man, right? We are what we are. I have nothing against men, but you know, we need to work together. Leverage on your strengths. We are Lakshmi, Saraswati, Parvati. That's what we are. Go for it. All right. Thank you very, very much. It's been amazing being part of this whole event. And I look forward to ladies in whatever way you want. Thank you. Ma'am.